I would like to now talk about how these polymers form to begin with. You can throw in monomers in, in a test tube and whether they will assemble into filaments, these microtubule elements or the intermediate filaments or actin filaments, or what are the requirements to initiate polymerization of these monomers. Let's see the process. Short oligomers of a few subunits assemble spontaneously, but they are unstable. They dis disassemble readily uh, because each monomer is bonded only to a few other monomers. I hope you recall uh, our last module and uh, how I explained the number of uh, monomers being held together by lateral and longitudinal uh, forces. For a new large filament to form, subunits must assemble into an initial aggregate. So if we are to initiate polymerization, first of all, a few of these monomers have to come together. You can think of it as a seed. Uh, that small aggregate will act as a seed, and the new monomers, once they start uh, adding on, that will result in formation of a filament. So the nucleus uh, that is stabilized by many subunit, subunit contacts can then elongate rapidly by addition of more uh, subunits. So the critical part of this process is the initial nucleation step where monomers have to come together. So it can take quite a bit of time because, you know, as we have talked about, there's thermal energy in the cell. So these subunits coming together and then dissociating because of the thermal uh, energy. So some of these, when they survive these nucleating structures, if they survive, they can then quickly add on uh, other monomers and form the filaments. Let me show you this in a graphic form. So here you have a subunits, uh, actin in this case. They first of all have to form these oleg oligomers, which are basically associations of a small number of monomers forming this seed. Now this takes time. So here on the x-axis we have time, and on y-axis we have percentage of actin subunits in the filaments. So at certain point, if you have enough oleg oligomers over a certain period of time, they when they enough oleg oligomers have formed they will start elongating and you will have your actin filaments, uh, which is shown here uh, in this part of the diagram. There are a couple of things I would like to point out. First of all, uh, how do we uh, check uh, how much time has elapsed? The one way to do is you can begin polymerization by raising temperature or by uh, raising the salt concentration and then monitoring how much polymer or monomer uh, is present in your uh, test tube. Additionally, I would like to point out, after the lag phase, you have rapid polymerization or elongation or the growth phase, which is here. So here's the nucleation lag phase. After uh, you have formed certain amount of polymer, uh, this slope basically plateaus off. So at this stage, we have equal number of polymers, uh, polymers losing and gaining monomers an equal amount. So if you add two actin, sub, actin um, monomer subunits to this filament, two are also coming off. So this is basically an equilibrium phase. So amount of monomers lost equals amount of monomers added. At this concentration, the concentration at which we gain the steady state or equilibrium phase, that concentration of monomer is called the critical concentration because if we, if we lower the amount of monomer in the solution, you will basically end up with net disassembly of the polymer. So if you increase the amount of uh, monomer, at, increase the amount of monomer, at this stage you will again start making more polymer. But if you, your amount of monomer is less than critical concentration, you will start uh, uh, disassembling the polymer because, again, it is, um, uh, it is both a forward and a backward reaction. The instability of smaller aggregates creates a kinetic barrier to nucleation which is easily observed in a solution of pure actin or tubulin. Uh, the subunits of actin filaments or uh, microtubule uh, uh, filaments uh, respectively. When polymerization is initiated in a test tube containing a solution of pure individual subunits, 
there is an additional lag phase during which no filaments are observed, as we saw in the graph. During the lag phase, nuclei basically assemble slowly and followed by rapid uh, filament elongation phase, which we saw in the, in the graphic form uh, earlier. The system approaches a steady state when the rate of addition of new subunits to filament, new filament rate of addition of new subunits to filament ends is exactly balanced by the rate of subunit dissociation uh, from the ends. That is when we had that um, basically uh, you reached at, at particular concentration, you have that kinetic equilibrium phase which we saw in the graph. The concentration of free subunits left in the solution at this point is called the critical co concentration, which I pointed out when we were talking at, when we were looking at the graph. The value of uh, critical concentration is equal to the rate constant of subunit loss divided by the rate constant for the subunit addition. That is, critical concentration equals K of K on. Now, I would like to point out K, it's a small K, it is the rate, it's not a constant itself. Uh, large K, capital K, is, uh, the, is a constant. Small K here, basically, we are saying is the rate of subunit off divided by subunit on equals the critical concentration. I hope that is obvious from what we have been discussing. So here, again, I will show you, K, we have a polymer and a subunit adds to the polymer it's a reversible reaction. It can go in either direction. Subunit can add on or subunit can come off the polymer. So the linear polymer, uh, polymer of a protein molecule such as actin or microtubule assembles, uh, which is polymerizes or disassembles, depolymerizes by addition and removal of the subunits at the ends of the polymer. The rate of addition of these subunits or monomers is given uh, by the rate constant K on and which has uh, units of um, moles per second, per moles per second. So this is basically, uh, this is a second order reaction in which you have, uh, in which you have two ent entities, you, uh, the, the, you have a rate which is dependent upon time and also the concentrations, therefore the units are molar per molar per second. Rate off is just in seconds because it is the first order reaction. And in this case, uh, let me put it in a different way. The number of monomers that add to the polymer, uh, actin or microtubule, per second will be proportional to the concentration of, uh, of the free subunits, which is K on times, uh, times the concentration. But the subunits will leave polymer ends at a constant rate, K off, that does not depend upon the concentration. As the polymer grows, subunits are used up and the concentration is observed to, uh, to reach uh, its constant value, which we, has, we, which we have said is the critical concentration. At this concentration, the rate of subunit addition equals the rate of subunit loss. So again, K on... Uh, times the concentration equals K off or basically the critical concentration equals K off uh, divided by uh, K on. K off again is the rate at which a subunit is lost. K on is the rate at which subunit is gained. So we can do this experiment in a different way. If we add uh, seeds, which is basically if we add nuclei, our filament fragments that have been chemically cross-linked and if they are added to the solution at the beginning of the reaction, we basically get rid of that lag phase. We start off with the elongation phase and till we reach the steady state, steady state uh, or equilibrium phase, but the critical concentration remains unchanged even if we add these nuclei because that is constant for certain amount of monomer present in our experiment. So this is uh, basically, we have talked about the, the rules of addition or subtraction of monomers from the polymer, and we will continue this discussion, uh, discussion in the next module.